Hey, this is The Shoveler from The Mystery Men. Check us out on our other social media platforms. We're on Twitter, at MysteryMen16. Yes, there were 16 other Mystery Men. Uh, We're also on Facebook, Mystery Men Podcast. Check out our page there. Hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to today's show. I wanted to start off with a new segment we call When Leftists Freak Out, in which we will share one of what seems to be a million leftist freak out videos. Here's today's video. All right. right. Here we go. You ready? I don't know if you're ready for this. I'm terrified. Listen to me, Republicans. Listen. You are the people in history they warned us about! Oh my god. They warned us about people like you! Pay attention! We're losing our democracy! Wake up! Wake up! I thought he was going to eat the camera. I thought that's what I <laughs> Oh my gosh. Man. Wow. So, I feel like they can uh, remix that and like make some sort of like like a dub beat. Like when she starts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that will happen. Um, uh, many people have been comparing her to Ursula uh, from The Little Mermaid. God, what, a, what an atrocious woman. <laughs> she put a little reverb in there? I mean, like, where did that come from? Is you know, like, like a out. lot of these videos of leftists freaking out, I just kind of wonder, feel sorry for, like, their neighbors. Like, they're screaming at the top of their lungs. I, you would hear that. Like, let's say you're next door to this person. I mean, you hear this going on. Like, I don't know. I'd be like, oh, my God. She's she's, she's talking to the Republicans again. <laughs> oh, God. What's, what's funny guy. is that. Like, <laughs> what do they think? Do they do they truly believe that they are saying something or they're presenting themselves in a way that's going to convince people to change their mind? Like there's so much anger. They've killed all their friendships and relationships with people who are Republicans. Who's watching that video? Yeah. <laughs> I really don't know. These are the same um, people who are like, if you voted for Trump, I don't want to be your friend anymore. Unfriend me. And now they're like, Republicans, listen to me. Can't really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the other thing is, it sounds like she's like reading from like a Shakespearean play at one point. I, I don't know. <laughs> don't <laughs> like, give too much credit, a, no, no, no. I mean, like, she's like, listen to me, Republicans. Like, I, I don't know what that is about, but. I, I'm like, is she? I don't know. It's like the beta it's... Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> <laughs> My fellow Americans. <laughs> what? Who is she talking to? Like a Terminator coming from the future that told her about this like mysterious people called the Republicans? Like, I I don't she know. About? What prophecy did we make? <laughs> Yeah. I don't know, but like it, her her message is getting out. This video currently has uh, 1.2 million views. Oh god, people! I don't know. So, uh, I feel like that's what they do this for, just the views. They can't honestly think they're, yeah. uh, they're getting anywhere. With this. Man, I want to see her follow up on November fourth. Oh man, yeah. yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're on the right side of history. They are. They truly are, and uh, <laughs> we'll find out on uh, come November 4th, you know, how right they were. This week, it's become clear that the left is starting to freak out about Biden's lesser son, Hunter. His lesser son. His lesser son. <laughs> he has no other sons, man. They all died. Yeah. He still talks about, he talks about both. He talks about him every chance he gets. Yeah. My crack, my crackhead yeah. son, Hunter. I wish the other one had, I wish he had died instead of the other one. <laughs> Bull was a patriot. <laughs> Hunter's the crackhead. It's like Goofus and Gallant. Yeah, yeah literally. That's like the prime Goofus and Gallant of this century. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry, Dad. I'm, a, I'm alive. 
<laughs> a gallant served in the military. Goofus took drugs and got kicked out. In the player. military and got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> gallant, gallant raised millions of dollars to the Democratic National Committee. Goofus worked for Burisma. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as many have heard, a laptop was essentially found, and it was uh, Hunter's laptop. He had many uh, email on it, and it's being slow leaked. Uh, you know, for the last couple of days, I think there's going to be more to come. Definitely. <laughs> Did you see some of the pictures that were leaking yeah. out? <laughs> like, he had a half, half used crack pipe hanging out of his mouth while he was <laughs> laying in bed. <laughs> What's the best one? Well, now I get to see the pictures. Uh, and once we finish this, this segment, I would like to share like they they are Democrats are floating another narrative now. Uh, from the Daily Mail, uh, this came shortly after Wednesday's show or the Tucker Carlson show. Um, he basically revealed some more emails, and I, I, and I think I could probably give you a good summation from this Daily uh, Mail article about what has happened so far, at least this past week. So I'll read from there. Um, the first emails were released by the New York Post on Wednesday, sparking backlash for Twitter and Facebook when they tried to replace restrictions on the story being shared, claiming it was a breach of their policy on hacked materials. Uh, Rudy Giuliani gave the Post a trove of emails in which Vadim Pozarski, a Burisma advisor, thanked Hunter for introducing him to his father, then the vice president. Within months of the 2015 meeting that Pozarski refers to in the emails, Biden had successfully pressured Ukrainian officials to fire the prosecutor who was looking into Pozarski's business. Now, I know many of you remember this video that was released of Biden, you know, gloating about what he did as far as pressuring the Ukrainian government to fire that a representative was looking into Burisma. Um, to go on further, at the time, Hunter was being paid 50000 a month by Prozarsky's gas firm to act as a consultant, despite the fact that he had no experience working in the gas industry. After the Post story emerged on Wednesday, the Biden campaign said he had not met Pozarski as a part of his official schedule, but an informal me meeting was not ruled out. The second batch of emails on Thursday suggested Hunter pursued deals with a major Chinese energy company, including one that would be interesting for me and my family uh, from the emails. <laughs> so uh, there's a Chinese chairman uh, of an energy company that he is working with. That uh, particular chairman has not been seen uh, since he was taken into custody <laughs> by Chinese authorities in 2018 amid rumored links to Chinese military and intelligence services. And he, apparently this Chinese chairman uh, gave him, gave Hunter a diamond, I'm guessing, as a part of his <laughs> payment plan. <laughs> uh, and also, from the emails, uh, there's, there have been details that have emerged that include large cash payments to the partners as well as eventual equity stakes. Hunter, referred to as quote-unquote H, was to get 20%. The deal listed 10 Jim and 10 held by H for the big guy. Jim refers to, I believe, uh, Joe Biden's brother um, at that time, and uh, 10 held for H by the big guy. The big guy is referring to Biden. And that wow. was to be held by Hunter. Um, and so, you know, a lot of, a lot of... Whoa, whoa. So they're really talking yeah. about potentially they were transferring money to Biden directly? Like or yeah. for him. Well, yeah, he was going to hold it for him. Essentially, Hunter would go make these deals, and then he would need to. He would be holding some of that for Biden and giving that as a payment to Biden. So this and is all been, alleged, uh, right? But the article yes, is talking about this, right? Yes, yes, yes. Oh and um, you know, Ooh, I, I think wow. uh, there were text messages because this this uh, laptop also hosted uh, thousands of text messages from hunter to several people and so one of them was him to his daughter talking about you know essentially i'm not quoting exactly here but he was saying i'm not going to hold you know half of your earnings like uh basically your grandfather does for you know his children 
Um, and so that was referring to the fact that he's having to like all this work he's doing uh, to get this money from these foreign entities. He's having to give part of that uh, to his dad, Joe Biden. Wow. Yeah. So um, that's the definitely the lesser of the two he's, sons. I mean, like, he's really I, screwed he, he's, like, <laughs> I mean, like, I was, I was thinking, like Hunter Biden has to be like the worst son ever. Meaning, like, in just the sense, like, you got caught with crack, and then you're like. I mean, what he did was illegal, but he was so bad at it that he got his dad caught while he was running for president. Like, yeah. and the way he got caught, he just forgot his laptop. That has to be like the dumbest. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I have evidence on that. I'm just not gonna pick it up. I'm <laughs> just leave it at the computer shop. But I'm like, dude, how incompetent is this guy? If I could see them at like a Bo's funeral or something, Hunter, just be like, "Don't worry, Dad, I'm still alive." Like, shut up, Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> worst day ever well, you, know what's sad? you know what's sad like there were other emails i think he wrote an email to himself just after bo uh, died <laughs> hunter did hunter did this was another email, like that a was email. And, uh, and he was don't basically forget, hide all the cash <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to hide all of dad's <laughs> vice president's cash yeah. secret slush fund <laughs> I will tell you what my customer's secret again <laughs> dear hunter don't forget I have dad's cash from hunter <laughs> also don't sleep with your crack pipe in your mouth <laughs> P.S. <laughs> to delete the picture of the crack pipe in your mouth <laughs> <In prostitutes. laughs> the emails like the last email is like remember to pick up laptop from <laughs> store. <laughs> Don't forget pick up stolen laptop with secrets. I couldn't I couldn't read my emails. It was on my laptop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said it to himself and then he put his laptop in the shop. <laughs> that's why. Oh that's why he forgot it. Okay. I never got that email, man. I never got that email. (laughs) You stole the laptop. I heard the laptop at the computer shop. How am I going to get it? Oh, that's a reminder for like 2030. Yeah, he set the wrong date for the reminder. Yeah. <laughs> 2030. <laughs> Just to briefly go over that real quick. Yes, Hunter dropped off his laptop, his MacBook Pro at a computer repair shop. Yeah, what a dork. Uh, the computer repair shop, I think you sign a waiver saying if you don't pick it up like within 90 days, then it becomes property of you know the shop. Or I, that may even be a law in Delaware for that. Um, so he never picked it up after repeated you know uh, tries of you know contacting him and everything. And so it became ownership of the shop uh and then you know the shop you know discovered some of these emails and thought oh there this needs to be you know seen by somebody so i think it was uh, seized by the fbi at that time um so giuliani's uh, lawyer bob costello said that there were <laughs> there are some forty thousand emails on the hard drive oh, including man. thousands of texts it also includes images of Hunter in very compromising positions, Costello <laughs> told Fox News. I'm telling you, the um, people with this most dirt, for some reason, like to take pictures of them and keep all these records. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm funding me millions of dollars, so I'm going to take pictures of myself with crack whores. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to put it all in one place. <laughs> some of the things I've been reading, it sounds like there's like, Far worse pictures than really you know, would have been talked about or yeah, released so heard. far. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we may see that in the coming days. Uh, Dude, do y'all remember October in surprise. 2016 whenever uh, Anthony Weiner's <laughs> emails? <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's the comparison the they've been making thing. is that it's much worse. It's the much pictures worse, in this yeah. laptop are much worse than whatever Anthony Weiner did. Dang. So wow. I think there's some. Bad stuff. This is on there. worse than Wiener. Yeah, that's what uh, Julia. Now I don't know. If, I, I watched the uh, the Stephen Crowder like louder Crowder stream the like last, the Rudy last week whenever yeah. they did the yeah and what Rudy did Giuliani. Giuliani 
he basically it was like he had the laptop there i yeah. wasn't understanding that but it looked like he had the laptop with him on his desk he was like showing it up you know to the camera and he was basically saying you know there was a lot more that we're gonna that was gonna be coming out about it um but it seemed like he was saying that there's some pretty bad stuff on it and he was ready wow. to start and he had like documentation of uh hunter's lawyer actually contacted the computer shop after this story was released asking for the laptop back <laughs> yeah. like uh, Shubler, can i have my laptop back <laughs> Shubler, do you yeah. know the, like the timeline because i hear two different timelines like he dropped it off in 2017 or april uh of april and then or april 2019 they give um, you it has to be 2019 i, I believe it it, it it that's what i heard 2019 um or that's what i read man uh, this pandemic is kicking butt left and right yeah. man he did it before <laughs> yeah. the pandemic that's how lame he is <laughs> he can't even blame the chinese oh virus yeah you're them. right the 2019 yeah, yeah, yeah. not 2020 yeah that's true well you know 20 not 20 is where it surfaced so <laughs> go ahead yeah. I oh, know. I'm just saying his computer password was probably Hunter. Just Hunter. Password Hunter. <laughs> 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 Yeah. You know, well, like I, I want to know like what he took it in for like what kind of repair no he they said it was water damage he probably peed oh, on it or dropped it in the bathtub <laughs> one of those things <laughs> that picture of him in the tub with just the oh finger. yeah that's probably where he dropped it i wonder like like the picture of him asleep with the crack pipe in his mouth like who took that picture like, yeah. <laughs> i would see the girl that he was with at that time uh, i'm just like why would that be a picture you would want why would he yeah. send that to the recycle bin immediately that's just <laughs> <laughs> This <laughs> recycle bin <laughs> doesn't uh, go anywhere. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of emails, she's back. <laughs> Hillary Clinton <laughs> says she's ready to serve in a Biden administration. She's always You're right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always ready. Uh, Hillary Clinton on Thursday said if she... She's called to serve in the potential Biden administration that she's ready to help fix the United States. To quote her, I'm ready to help in any way I can, because I think this will be a moment where every American, I don't care what party you are, I don't care what age, race, gender, I don't care. Every American should want to fix our country. So, you know, I was really hoping she was going to run for president in 2020. But, you know, just as like a surprise out of nowhere. But this is as close as I'm going to get if she, you know, you know, tries <laughs> to tag along with this. So I, I'll take it. But uh, what do you guys think about uh, Hillary being a part of the next administration? I bet if she did do that, once it's done, she would try to run again. She'd be like, I gained so much more experience. I think like. Yeah. She'd be so yeah. old by the time that she got to the <laughs> How, old How old is she now? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Uh, yeah, I don't know how old she is. She looks she look like she's going 60, 60 to 80. Yeah. <laughs> My conspiracy theory is that you know, there's a couple of leaders who are already guaranteed cabinet positions because they're assuming they're going to win. And that, that whole Nancy Pelosi's uh, 25th Amendment talk is all in preparation for letting people know that Biden is crazy and officially making that known. So then uh, they can start shifting around because the Speaker of the House is third in line to the uh, presidency. So <laughs> it's just saying. death surround Hillary Clinton. So Well, that, that's true. She, so, <laughs> so with all that going on with the, the 25th Amendment adjustments and the mysterious deaths from Hillary, they can... They can adjust things. Nancy Pelosi seems like she has a little bit of dementia also. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too, man. I think she's pretty crazy. I don't know. Was she, was there ever a time she was like with it? Like she was, I, I don't recall. Dude, she's 81. Like Nancy Pelosi, really? Yeah, she's oh, 81. A lot of Botox. Oh, wow. right? She's talking about Trump being crazy. She is insane. Oh my goodness. Well, that's like your crazy grandmother for you i guess like i could totally see that 
I, I can't man. see what Hillary Clinton could be doing do now because she, I thought she quit in this or she resigned uh, in the before the second term of uh, Obama. I don't well, think she was resigned. that so she could run? Yeah, really? I mean, um, yeah, probably. Maybe. Uh, yeah, because yeah, that's true. Because uh, what's his name took over, right? Um, the guy that married the ketchup lady, um, John, <laughs> John Kerry. Kerry? Right? Yeah. <laughs> you the ketchup lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the nice. Fortune. <laughs> John Kerry. <laughs> so yeah, she, he did take over as uh, Secretary of State, but I think she was like prepping to run uh, for president at that time. That's right. That's so, right. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, like the, the the thing that gets me is that all these like loonies like end up having some kind of weird email scandal. <laughs> like everything comes out in their emails. It's like they haven't learned their lesson with the emails. <laughs> but you know, that, yeah, of course, Hillary is known for one Benghazi and then two uh, through that investigation, her emails, private email server, which she wiped with a cloth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. She had the armed guard guarding it. Yeah, the one guard. <laughs> the one guard preventing hacks. Uh, you know, <laughs> from the outside, keep viruses from attacking. You. That's not how it works. <laughs> Wasn't that like posted in like a her house or something or one yeah, of their houses. using net zero she got she got <laughs> hacked and when they had told her it wasn't properly protected she said an armed guard was protecting her like that's not how a hack works hillary <laughs> she, <laughs> she probably was using one of those aol her aol account well, <laughs> disc. <laughs> she, yeah the disc she had the disc i still got a thousand free hours <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to change it now. <laughs> we have more discs, right? <laughs> yeah, we have lots of discs. Can we just change them out? Perfect. Perfect. Nobody knows what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, did any of you guys get to watch the town hall meetings that happened last uh, week with Biden and Trump? Watch a little bit Watch of it. A little bit. I watched, yeah, yeah, I watched some clips of it. Yeah, I've, I kind of like was flipping between both, and I also got busy, so I can see everything. But I've seen a lot of clips as well uh, post uh, debate, I should call it, on the Trump side because he was literally debating Savannah Guthrie. I mean, Savannah no lip Guthrie, upper lip Guthrie for like the, a whole hour or two. Yeah. Uh, does anybody else find that a little weird that she has like zero upper lip? Like that's kind of <laughs> scary to me. <laughs> I'm curious about the look. Yeah, no, I, have uh, too. I don't get why they chose her for the town hall because I know for a debate you have to use uh, like the person provided, but a town hall isn't a debate. Couldn't he have just chosen the person? No, they just wanted somebody to go after her. Yeah, really and uh, there were already NBC employees uh, that were very upset that it was being hosted on uh, NBC at all. Um, and there were lots of calls for people for it to have been hosted on MSNBC. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, she doesn't that, have uh, a upper lip. It's she just, doesn't have it's an just upper lip. teeth, gum, and, and then skin. Right. She looks like and, the Joker and, smile from <laughs> 1989 Batman. <laughs> that really bothered. It was kind of scary because when she would like shout, it would become more pronounced. Like. Yeah, that there was wow. no literally no upper lip. Now I'll feel bad if that was some medical condition of hers, but I don't get the feeling it was. So, yeah, she uh, had an upper lip octomy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but you know, she was definitely slammed uh, on Thursday night after her hostile and biased behavior towards uh, President Trump during their town hall event. Which I, I'm sorry, but these thing these town hall events just don't seem authentic whatsoever because. A lot of the questions that are posed, like they seem like they're very pre-planned. Maybe they've even been been given to these town hall attendees. And then she had several follow-up questions that went along with that exact <laughs> town hall question. So it oh, wasn't she, like she it was, in advance, right? Yeah, I think yeah, so. That's what it seemed like at least. Uh, because she would then, you know, start questioning him, you know, right after he would answer, you know, somebody um uh, on their town hall question. And it just, it seemed out of place, but, uh, and then, you know, flipping back to Biden's town hall, I mean, it was very calm. Like there was, you know, no, I mean, there may have been like once or twice where, um, uh, what's his name who hosted that? Stephanopoulos. Uh, yes. Uh, George Stephanopoulos, uh, 
basically pushed back a barely, um, if any, during that town hall meeting. But um, and it just and again, a lot of things were highlighted after the fact, um, like some of the questioners worked for like the Obama administration or the uh, or worked for Al- like so Guthrie, I, I will say even for her specifically, her husband worked as uh Vice President Al Gore's traveling chief of staff during the 2000 presidential election. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's there were other people who were actually uh, the town hall attendees that were asking questions during Biden's event that were, you know, they were literally like uh, I think one person was the wife of a Democrat who ran for office in, you know, some election uh, sometime recently, too. So it, it just, you know, it was very one sided. And I think a lot of us were probably expecting a lot of that. But it's still annoying to see. I think you got there was more um, views on the Biden uh, <laughs> town hall. I think part of it is some people want to see or I, my personal belief is people just want to see him mess up or um, they already know Trump's president. So why don't we hear what this guy that says he can do a better job is saying? Uh, but there, I mean, there's just very little expectation, I think, from anyone to believe that it being on NBC was even going to provide any neutral ground in the first place. Uh, did you guys see the uh, nodding uh, Trump lady in the back background yeah. of uh, Trump's yeah, yeah, I that, that was yeah. big news. I heard they're trying to dox her. Yeah, I heard they oh already did. Um, yeah. But I haven't heard her name or anything for doing what for, for nodding for her head in agreement yeah. to trump <laughs> saying she was maybe so, paid off she uh, was paid off yeah. you see some of the questions <laughs> this like 55 year old black lady came on with a question for in biden's town hall it was literally three paragraphs and she was like looking at the paper like she had never seen it before in her life <laughs> and then she was talking about fracking is very important to me do you stand for fracking like, are you serious this is All right where do you live she lady was, you know, it was in new york city or something like that there's no fracking going on where she's living what are you talking about? It made no sense. I'm very concerned about Mars exploration. Could you tell me what you think is your policy? Uh, when are we going to? And then he didn't even answer the question. He was like, "Oh, oh, oh. It's like, come on, man, come on." Come on, man. Come on man. And, and then to top it all off, at the end, after after the uh, the town hall was over, he began to, I guess, talk to the town hall attendees. And the press was raving about it because they were saying, oh, look at him. He's he's even taking questions and answering questions for people who didn't get to answer, ask their questions even after the town hall is over. And he's just taking the time to do that. And, and he doesn't even expect, you know, it to be filmed at all. And meanwhile, and they're saying that literally they were saying as that as they're filming him doing that. So, uh, you know, I'm very convinced now that so Joe Biden is our candidate. <laughs> So uh, while Trump was, quote, dodging questions, the girlfriend of Zachary Ty Bryan, a.k.a. Brad Taylor from Home Improvement, should have dodged Zachary's oh, beatdown. <laughs> <laughs> this from Fox News, Zachary Ty Bryan of Home Improvement arrested, accused of trying to strangle his girlfriend. Former Home Improvement star Zachary Ty Bryan was arrested in Oregon on Saturday, accused of trying to strangle his girlfriend, according to reports. Police in Eugene, Oregon. I didn't even know. Why, why is he living in Oregon? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> went to Bryan's residence Friday evening following a report from a neighbor of a physical dispute. Brian, 39, was found outside in an apartment while his girlfriend, 27, was inside a neighboring one, according to E! News. He was booked into the Lane County Jail and faces charges that include strangulation, assault in the fourth degree, and interfering with making a report, police said, according to OregonLive.com. Brian allegedly assaulted the victim, impeded her breathing, and took the victim's phone from her when she tried tried to call 911. So, uh, yeah, I guess um, some of the the home improvement kids have not turned out so well. Yeah, it's, it's sad. Like he, <laughs> well, and he know he had left his wife a few weeks before that uh, for this oh, really? girlfriend. 
And so, wow. Yeah. And you, Oh yeah. Oh, he was married and then yeah. the side piece. Yeah. Oh, and he, like, left yeah. For the side piece. And then of course, it's obviously that is clearly that, that, that person is not going to care for you. Yeah. Well, get ready guys. Uh, he apparently was a Trump supporter or at least, uh, uh, not, he was a Republican. So oh, man. that's going to be fun for the next week. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, he was so famous, you know, because, you know, besides. Yeah, I'm uh, surprised that uh, improvement. home improvement fame didn't get him off the, you know, get him out of jail. Well, I mean, he was in much <laughs> bigger things oh, uh, really? as a boy. I mean, uh, he was in uh, things such as uh, a brief uh, appearance in the Fast and the Furious <laughs> Tokyo Drift. Oh, Tokyo yeah. Drift. That was oh, a really? Point. Yes, uh, you don't remember that first race, and he just can't, he just played the douchey high schooler kid that he that had his dad's car and raced it against the Tokyo Drift against star. The, uh, yeah, how uh, how uh, another lame star? The Alabama guy who <laughs> yeah who moved yeah. to Tokyo. What's interesting? He's a football <laughs> they player. Look, but... They all looked like they were in their forties too. Yeah, even <laughs> they probably they all were. In high school. I know, play high schoolers like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, hey man. <laughs> that was the only t- that was the only fast and the furious they never asked any of the actors to come back for any yeah. of the later <laughs> 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 only one and done yeah, yeah. That was yeah. That was yeah. Asian. yeah they had yeah, the, the Asian guy that died he yeah, died in the movie they're like we'll bring him yeah back. they even brought him all back all the people but... they brought him back they brought him back <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why did they hire them? Well, I know the tangent, but that the main character, he looks like he gets his haircut at Supercuts on half off day. <laughs> the, the, the main character, he was such a bad actor, and I remember him yeah. playing. Uh, oh, I he was like, "Yeah, I didn't even have to take acting classes. I just acted for this movie." I'm like, "Dude, we could tell." Like, <laughs> dude, no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that was probably the worst out of the series. I'll, although I had to say, the last Fast and Furious I I watched or I tried watching, I think I had to stop watching it after a while. It might have been with you guys. Yeah, that was uh, but, me, Blue Raja, and we were watching it with you, Shell. We stopped halfway. <laughs> they, yeah, it was it like every three scenes, they would all get out in a. They would line their cars up, and then they would all get out at the same time and start walking towards the camera, and then start flashing towards like scantily clad women. Like, like, you know, just randomly. And it would happen like every three scenes. I was like, I think it was like the third or fourth time that we saw that, that exact <laughs> scenario happen that we just had to quit it. Hey, man, if the formula works, it works. Yeah, it really <laughs> works. The formula has been working for like how many <laughs> Little Bow Wow was in that. And Ja Rule, some big heavy rappers. Yeah, Ja Rule, little Bow Wow. Man, Ja Rule. <laughs> he was in the first one. He was in the first See, one. See, I, I blame the many problems Ja Rule faced on that stupid movie because he had the continued success. He was able to invest money, and then the Fire Festival came out. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I think there's more more repercussions from making that crappy movie than we, when we first thought. And then, yeah. then Bow Wow got raped by his bodyguard after that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a rumor. It's not true. Bow wow. <laughs> Bow wow got raped. That was that a rumor. That was rough. Ja Rule started fire festival. We had the bad haircut, no acting guy. Oh man! Just <laughs> <laughs> restart the whole movie. That's you know, and like the the Asian dude that like died in Tokyo Drift, like. Did they they brought him back? But I I still never understood the timeline on that. Like yeah, I didn't either. It, it, it was well, like it was, uh, so like there's a several movies where that like happened basically before Tokyo Drift. But then like in the late like one of the like, I think it was either the last one like not eight or yeah it should be eight. Um, they like it's in the future and he like it shows that he actually survived what ha- whatever happened in Tokyo Drift, but. I don't know yeah, Tok- I guess like, I think like Tokyo Drift was like after like five or six, even though they were like using like flip flones and stuff. It was like, so- <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, like, what about all that stuff? <laughs> I mean, and then they came off, now they all have like the spin offs with uh, what, what's those two Hobbs guys? And Hobbs, Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and the Shaw. Rock and oh, Rock. I, I saw Hobbs and Shaw. That movie is so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> There's like what, what is thing. it about? <laughs> it's just uh so it's basically um 
there's this like it, what's his name Idris Elba's uh, character. He has like this like s- I don't know if it's like a suit or he was like basically like uh, kind of has surgery done on him to where he's like a superhuman or something or like kind of a robotic human. But anyway, he uh, and he wants to basically release a virus that will like. <laughs> I guess you know, like mm-hmm. kill all, every, most people, or like the weak, and then, or make everyone kind of like him, like only the strong survive, whatever. So you know, um, and then uh, what's his name? Shaw, the guy who plays Shaw, the um, not the Rock. Oh, what's the other guy's name? Jason Statham. Oh, Jason, yeah, Jason Statham. Statham yeah. yeah. So his like sister, I guess, is um, like has uh, like injected herself or something to like. I don't know, like stop them from getting the virus, but um, they're basically trying to like, I don't know, like keep her safe and then also like stop Idris Elba's character. But uh, and then of course, like there's just this like really uncomfortable scene where her and The Rock like make out because like they just uh, you know fall for each other. But um, yeah, it's pretty lame. Otherwise, it's just just lame. Lame, the cash lame. grab, yeah, yeah, but there's there's just so <laughs> many ridiculous things. Like, I just remember this one scene when there's like this big like race car chase, and like, um, they're like racing down the street, and this like biker is coming from the opposite end towards them. And the rock like sticks his hand out of the driver's side window and grabs the guy off the motorcycle. <laughs> He's just driving with the guy in his hand and then he slaps the guy against a wall or something. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. Not that his arm would like break <laughs> off <laughs> in the opposite direction on a motorcycle. But uh, yes, I remember that. <laughs> it's just I don't know. It's just like one of those movies you had to like kind of turn your brain off and then just like I don't know. Just let it happen any, to you. Any other uh, big films Brad was in? <laughs> no, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was he, he's in Friday Night Lights, right? Wasn't he? In uh, he was, I don't think he was in Friday Night Lights. He was, he was, doing on, one episode, uh, he was on one episode of Special Victims Unit from Law and Order. Well, still, oh, yeah. Oh, Brad, 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 yeah. Brad. Okay. Yeah. I thought you you think he like name dropped any of those? He's like, Memory from Home Improvement, SVU. <laughs> Fast and Furious, <laughs> Tokyo Drift. <laughs> Fast and Furious, really? Tokyo Drift? Oh. <laughs> and he just says, I'm a producer. And he just puts his head down. Like, that's, that's exactly what it says in the article is that uh, he, he was, those were the highlights of his film career. And then he's also a producer, which, whatever that means, man, it's just like anybody could be a producer at this point. <laughs> Dude, I don't, man, Hollywood, <laughs> they just, they just some of these stories are just sad, like how they just spit, spit out some of these child yeah. actors and they just chew, yeah, yeah chew, eat them and just spit them out. Well, like speaking of uh, The Rock, I mean, he recently came out and endorsed endorsed Biden, of course, and Kamala Harris. Um, yeah, he said Kamala there been... Harris was a certified badass. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jump the shark for me now. I mean, yeah, he has. Long time. I Pretty he soon we're going to be just watching like old movies from the 1920s, like Charlie Chaplin or something like yeah. that. There's nothing going to be left. I mean, at this point, that's pretty much all I've been doing with my wife is going back and watching older movies. I haven't watched like a really new movie recently anytime. Better watch them soon before they erase them because they're. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, right. Find something. Hey, do you guys ever think that the SJW wave will ever like just cancel itself out at a certain point and then they'll just be done with it, or will it just keep going? Something I wonder. Yeah, yeah I, 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 like I, I, I don't think maybe with Hollywood, but I think there's a lot more independent like YouTube and things like that, that may eventually cancel it out, or there might be a shift towards watching those things more. I see um, that. They just cancel bigger and bigger until they just cancel the universe. And then that's the end of everything. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. It would have to be a culture shift to like, maybe, maybe that's how the universe started. The big bang was actually started by a giant canceling of the last universe. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's just a, yeah, like nothingness. Maybe, maybe. You're, 
Yeah, they're just canceling nothingness. Like nothingness here canceled. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big bang. Boom. <laughs> what does space? Why does space have to be black? Why does space have to be black? Why does space have to be black? <laughs> space is so racist, man. <laughs> boom. <laughs> just that woman from the beginning screaming like no, like boom. <laughs> <laughs> All the stars are coming in. Republican like, yeah. stars. I would, I would think there's some, you know, there's some angst or frustration from like the next generation after the millennials, who pretty much are seen to be the old, the, old, like, the culprits for all the issues. But uh, yeah, I would think it, w- it would definitely have to be a major shift in the cultural thinking of our of the U.S. for that to be canceled. Yeah. Well, um, you know, the last topic I wanted to cover real quick was uh, going to be voting. Um, you know, this week, early voting uh, really got underway. And I know I, I know in some of my social media feeds, uh, you know, certain friends of mine have gone and voted and, uh, you know, they're encouraging other people to vote. Um, I think one of the comments I saw from one of my more left leaning friends was uh, that they didn't see enough young people at the voting booths. They saw a lot of old people and, and themselves. <laughs> and he was trying to, <laughs> and he was trying to, <laughs> and he was trying to encourage young people to vote. But for me, I, I was just thinking in the back of my mind, I was like, yeah, you, people should vote, but they should vote informed. I don't want just everybody just to go vote and not know what they're doing or thinking about or mm-hmm. where they stand on issues. So, you know, that, that's a good sentiment overall. But uh, I would add vote informed if you're going to go vote. Um, and there's different utilities that uh, I, I know I've used. Um, and one of them was, you know, uh, I think it's called I, uh, ivoterguide.com. Um, that you can put in your uh, your zip code and it'll kind of give you the ballot of people who are uh, going to be your elected uh, officials within your area. And so you can kind of see where they stand on different issues uh, just to kind of get some knowledge on, you know, where you may stand versus them and uh, how, you know, conservative or how liberal they may be. And uh, of course, we're always going to encourage to uh go the conservative route but you definitely want to be informed whenever you're voting for something yeah so. another website you can use uh, i found really helpful is uh yeah. trump 2020 <laughs> <laughs> that one really helped me out a lot check it out trump 2020.com another one you can um encourage you to check out is isidewit.com if you just want to do a survey on the various topics being discussed in this election and um, you respond to it. And at the end, it does the calculation to identify which party, which candidate you're most aligned with. Oh, yeah, uh, that's a great it, one. I think yeah. I've tried that uh, in the past too. And yeah, definitely a great one, Spleen. Um, if you kind of want to get an exact, you know. Uh, and so, but I, I'll also say on iVoter.com, it does... Um, I think each of the candidates may have filled out a uh, a response sheet, and it'll kind of give their thoughts on each uh, thing. So, yeah, it, you know, a lot of these are great tools to figure out who you should vote for and why. You know, um, but uh, again, like, so are are any of you guys planning to do early voting? Or um, I know some even there's been you know some results that are coming back in. Uh, especially in places like Michigan and things like that, that are looking a little favorable towards Trump in early voting, but uh, that's good signs, but it's not over yet. So we definitely need to get it out there, but what are you guys doing? and When are you going to vote? I'm early voting. I'm probably going to do it this week. Great. uh, In my state, um, early voting starts tomorrow. So it's going to do that this week. Okay. I tried going, uh, yes, no, Friday evening and the line was like out the door like like her own, like very far out the door <laughs> and so I, I i was probably gonna go again another time but i want to do it early as well um but i also it also gave me some time to actually look at some of the candidates and you know some of their stances on things which i was glad to do and so far most of what i've seen it's aligned you know 
with the more Republican candidates, but um, I was trying to keep an eye out on some of the libertarian candidates for you know certain things just in case there wasn't a good Republican option. Hmm. Um, yeah, luckily, so far, yeah. I've been getting lots of reminders from random people texting me, just being like, "Are you voting? <laughs> Where are you voting at? Who are you voting for?" I'm like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> do you, so, do you have uh, conversations with them at all? Like, no, I, I, I think the one latest one I got yesterday was, "Are you voting?" And it was like, "Early voting starts this week." I was like, "Yeah." Then they're like. Where are you voting at? And I was like, I'm not responding. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I was afraid for. I don't. I mean, I don't know how they would, but I was afraid they would like. They could see which political party I was aligned with, maybe, because uh, I'm registered with a, you know, with the one party, and then I didn't want them to show up where I was gonna. <laughs> gonna be at so i just didn't respond respond it, i mean like in most places is it pretty much public information because i i got a text from some indian group in kind of the uh greater city area uh, surrounding area of mine and they apparently are very um you know they're very indian centric and they want indian issues to be up front yeah, um, and I, when I looked into the organization further, like <laughs> it said that they started out as a group of uh, women that you know got together after the 2016 uh, election to voice their frustrations, and then I immediately knew that they were far left and liberal. What are like the Indian know. issues? Are they trying to like get rid of Uber or something? Get the tax? No, rate? they just want to use the <laughs> Indian. <laughs> Lower regulations on Indian food stores. I get the taxi conglomerate back in business. Stub had the stereotyping of Indians in convenience stores. Brought to you by the Indian Convenience Store Alliance. I mean, I, I think they were they they quote unquote recognized uh, that there was a Indian, a sufficient Indian block of voters because we should all vote by our skin color. And uh, that skin color should be aligned with uh, the left or Democrats. So um, whenever I was, they asked, the first question was, uh, who are you voting for uh, in the 2020 elections for president? And I just told them uh, Biden, just to, just to kind of see where this went. And uh, the response was great. Uh, you can jo volunteer for our, you know, our organization, you know, here at this link. And so, I mean, just from that, that response immediately, I was just like, okay, you know, this is just, they're obviously one-sided and I would appreciate the group if it would be more, you know, neutral or moderate and, in you know, just trying to get out the vote period. Um, but uh, I do not like the fact that it's just, you know, a one-sided or, you know, something is in the back of their minds when they're reaching out to people who may be Indian, but they obviously knew that I was at least Indian or of Asian descent. And, yeah, you know, I had voted in the past because they have to be getting, you know, these names from somewhere. I well, I, I think from what I've read is that people can't tell who you voted for, but there is public information that will state if you voted in the past mm, okay. Um, okay so I don't, I don't know how you get that information but i remember <laughs> i was on youtube and one of the joe biden ads came up and they were talking about you know vote for joe biden and then at the end they're like remember we cannot see who you voted for but we can see if you voted i'm like so <laughs> what are you trying to say i guess <laughs> that's so interesting <laughs> Uh, you know, that's another thing on YouTube. I keep getting like Joe Biden commercials. Every I, ad I, get to Joe Biden. <laughs> I mean, I see some like Trump, like, pro, I mean, like Trump pro Trump commercials or it'll show, but it'll show Joe Biden like, we're going to take your guns. And it'll be like, <laughs> Joe Biden is trying to take your guns. He's not yeah. Joe. <laughs> What's funny is like the how I think that the best thing that both sides do is always find the worst picture of the other candidate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite is the Joe Biden is lost picture, like yeah. the old man had dementia that's lost and he's just kind of looking up in the sky, like <laughs> oh, and a razor taxes. <laughs> um, Mr. Pierce, did you already vote yet? I, I can't remember if you answered. I haven't voted yet, so I'm planning to go this week. 
Okay. Well, yeah. Way to go, guys. We got to cancel out some of these other weirdos' votes. <laughs> especially, that, uh, especially that lady we heard at the beginning of this podcast. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, I think in my age group, I, that's the one fear I have is, you know, a lot of them seem to be uh, leaning left and they're they are becoming a little bit more mobilized, but at, at the same time, it's like they're becoming more mobilized as they're getting older. So it kind of makes me wonder how things might shift in the future, but uh, we'll have to see. Time will tell. Have you guys, uh, yeah, so I did the uh, I, I side with uh, quiz. And so I just, mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell you my results, but the uh, the pictures of the libertarian and the some of these random party candidates <laughs> are awesome i was like i almost want to vote for you just because your picture so usually like neck beards the giant beards or this one guy has a rubber band in his beard oh my God. <laughs> it makes me want to vote for you so badly <laughs> well i think that's about all the time we have today so i hope you guys have a great week and we'll catch you on the next one Hey, this is The Shoveler again. Please leave us a comment if you enjoyed the show. Do you think anything will come out of the Hunter Biden emails? Will we see a reemergence of the Crypt Keeper, a.k.a. Hillary Clinton? Will Zachary Ty Bryan ever be known as anything other than Brad Taylor from Home Improvement? We'd love to know your thoughts. As always, have a great week, and we'll catch you on the next one.